For our final session, I'd like to call upon Karan Bajaj, technology entrepreneur and author. He is best known as founder and CEO of White Hat Junior. He has spent the last decade building things, writing novels, developing TV channels, as well as startups. Karan's latest book, The Freedom Manifesto, was published last week. He will talk about some of the rules to live the life of your calling from his book and will directly take questions from the audience at the end of his talk. The stage is all yours, Karan. Um, hi, I'm Karan. A uh, pleasure to meet you. Um, I'm actually very happy to be here because um, communication professionals have played a very, very important role in my life. And I was the head of Discovery in India and then at the head of Vita Junior. Uh, we had obviously several ups and downs during the course of this period. And uh, I really felt that the strength of a communication professional really helped the organization tie through lots of ups and downs in this period. So I'm, I'm very excited that I could have a chance to address you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, what I have in the next, I would say, 15 minutes before the Q&A is uh, somewhat of a personal journey, some thoughts to leave you on a more personal side. I think you've had uh, excellent business sessions from when I looked at the agenda. So this is like more like a personal thought process. And I uh, asked um, Mr. Prabhu, what should I pick up as a theme? And he was like, you know, um, any kind of lesson from your own personal journey that you think could inspire people who were, you know, in, in their own uh, fields looking to make big, important decisions. So I thought I'll use, I'll share just one framework with you, which I'd actually learned from, uh, I had a colleague called Samir Bajaj, right? And he would always tell me uh, whenever we were, um, you know, about to communicate a story, he would always say, what is the heart of the story, right? What is the story about? And cut all the clutter and go to the core of the story and say that message once, then keep repeating that message again and again, and just focus on that story. So I thought I would pick a construct from that. It's also because uh, uh, you guys have been very kind to buy my book. Um, so I will talk a little bit about how to think of your own life as a story. I hope it can provoke some thought. It was very provocative for me when I started thinking about it for the first time. So I'll give you a little bit of my personal context for people who don't know me, or for most of you who don't know me fully. And then I'll tell you a little bit of a concept which I hope can be interesting and provocative for you to think about. So, uh, I just have three slides, by the way. So, uh, the, this is a little bit of the picture of what I thought my life would be when I graduated from IIM Bangalore 20 years ago, right? So, I graduated from IIM Bangalore about 2002. We actually have our 25th, 20th reunion next uh, tomorrow. And I'd always thought that uh, I was like a strong performer in college, strong performer in IIM. I would take a job, I would do very well at it, right? And I would do very well, I would become the global CEO. So, that's what I thought my life would, end, would, would be. What actually it ended up being, was a bit of a mystery even to me because what would happen was that uh, I would be in a job for a few years, do quite well at it and then suddenly there would be some very strong thrust in my heart ki look, I'm not growing enough. I have to in some way uh, take up a growth like take up a growth endeavor which means something very deeply to my heart and my soul and I could never fully be able to explain it to anybody around me. My friends, my family, my colleagues, my managers, I could never fully explain why I had this sudden urge that I should go and take a very dramatic growth thrust in my life. And I learned something from that, this is what I wanted to share. But just to give you a little bit of like a very up and down journey of my life, uh, I was with Procter & Gamble after I am Bangalore and I did quite well. I uh, was promoted multiple times in India, went to the US. And then in 2008, about five, six years into my journey, I felt ki I'm living a life which I would be living 20, 30 years from now as well. I would still be in a job and then I would still be doing well. And this can't be the biggest meaning of life. So I made a very self-destructive move. I left my job uh, with no real uh, kind of like, you know, landing net. And I left my job to travel around the world and write a novel, right? So it was completely random, but I felt ki look, I really need experiences that I would, uh, that would help me grow. So, I, so that happened in 2008. I, backpacked in South America, Brazil, Peru, etc., Bhutan, Mongolia, Central Asia, and then came back, wrote a novel, and uh, learned something from that, which I'll tell you a little bit, but I came back. Um, I actually had a very bad entry when I came back. Uh, the day I came back to the US, Lehman Brothers had collapsed, 2008, there was no jobs at all. I didn't have a job. My, all my savings were like, you know, left, uh, lost in the travel, and I was in pretty bad shape, but eventually found a job, etc., right? Then I, at that point, I thought ki ye dubara kabhi nahi karna, right? I will never take this kind of a risk again. It's destructive and uh, I was reaching about 30 at that point. At 30, 
all of my friends at that time, you know, we didn't have these WhatsApps and stuff. They were Yahoo groups, right? People would send pictures of their, oh, this is my new house. I just had my first kid. And I was like, what happened? I was actually quite a good student in college. And now I'm, you know, at 30, I'm like with a backpack, no job, living on my sister's couch, trying to find a job. Yeah, how did I self-destruct so badly, right? So then I thought, ki dobara kabhi nahi. Then three, four years, so I found a job again, did quite well again. Then three, four years later, again, I had this sudden thrust. Ki yaar, uh, uh, so I'll tell you, the more personal thing was my mom, who I was very close to, she was in her early 50s and she died from cancer, right? So I was very, I, I was with her in the end and I was very, I, I don't know, upset by how the human body disintegrates and I really got very deep into my spiritual kind of questions. So I took, I left my job again. This time I thought I would learn yoga and meditation for a year. So I left my job and left, uh, I went from Europe to India by road and came to the, uh, to South India in the Sivananda Ashram and became a yoga teacher. Then um, went to the Himalayas, learned meditation for a few months. And uh, I came back again. I came back after that. I found a job and I thought, no, never again. Now I'm 35. I, ab, iske baad, you know, I have to stop taking these things. I have to have a much more stable life. And that time, my family is obviously very conservative. I was 35, not married. And uh, I remember there was a dinner once. And, uh, you know, I think one of my relatives said, Ki, look, if my, uh, his kids was like 9 or 10 years old. And he said, Ki, I would never want my kid to grow up like this without any permanent home you know, always kind of like going here and there. I would want them to have very stable, strong careers. It hit me very badly because uh, I was always a very high achiever in college. I never thought of myself as somebody who was a nomad, displaced, you know, no future potential. I always thought, you know, I was just... So at that time, it hit me very bad, right? So I thought, you know, uh, time to grow up. I'm 35. Then I joined a job, did very well again and thought that my career would, you know, again, go back to the linear line that I thought the IM would... Uh, I, I thought I would have an IM. But three, four years later, again, I had written two novels by that time, Keep Off the Grass, Johnny Gone Down, and the third novel called The Seeker, um, which had, the first two had done quite well in India at that point of time. And then um, I was like, you know, I have to really achieve excellence in the field that I've chosen, the artistic field. So I decided to become a full-time writer, right? So that was uh, right as we were pregnant with our first kid. So we were pregnant with our first kid, we were in New York, and I was like, look, uh, I really have to achieve creative excellence because I'm neither here nor there. I'm doing a job, I'm writing on the side, this is not... Uh, so I left my job again this time to become a full-time full writer in New York. And this was like, again, three, four years in, I left my job and this time I became a full-time writer. And again, spent 15, 18 months, uh, couldn't make it as a writer and... Uh, or it got published, but it didn't lead to the significant success that I thought it would. And then I was like, now I have to find a job again. And again, got, I became the head of Discovery in India. I thought this is perfect. Discovery is a very meaningful, purpose-driven organization. And uh, I'm now going to be a corporate CEO. You know, uh, like uh, life has given me another chance with all my meandering moves. I'm at the same place as, you know, my batchmates at IM who are doing very well are. So I should now I have to stick to what I'm doing. So I did it for two, three years, three, four years. Did Again, did a bunch of things at Discovery uh, in India. Uh, some ups, some downs, but did quite well again. And uh, just as Discovery was planning to send me to London to lead their global or a Asian business, I was like, look, I'm 40 years old and I don't know how to build a tech. I don't know how to build tech. I'm getting very old, you know, almost. I'm, I'm almost 40 years old and I don't know. I'm not in the new world at all. So I need to build my own tech company. So I left my job again and this time I decided to do a startup, right? And that was Whitehead Junior. Uh, and, you know, uh, like... Now my journey still continues and now I've embraced some part of this, which is uh, why do I keep doing these things? I wanted to give a little bit of a thought process around this and uh, my conclusion, and then I'll share a little bit of a framework for you to think about before the Q&A. My conclusion was that I saw a pattern emerge. I saw that extraordinary growth events are going to be very uncomfortable in the short term. So in the short term, when you're actually going ahead and making these decisions, it's brutal. It's actually very tough, right? Because uh, uh, each of these phases, I mentioned a little bit, right? Somebody telling you that, look, I don't want my kid to grow up like you, or, you know, you're, uh, like, you know, like when I had left my, when I'd come back and Lehman Brothers had crashed, I was really on my sister's couch in her house looking for a job, very, ran, like, you know, very displaced. Then in Whitehead Junior, for example, the first day I started, just before that, I was a discovery head, and we were working with the... Uh, Mr. Modi on Bear Grylls versus uh, Mr. Modi Wala show. 
So one day before I was with the Prime Minister, like working through the details, and the next day I was starting my own company with nobody in my house in one room and, you know, calling customers, 60, 70 customers a day, trying to tell them, you know, coding classes for kids, kya hota hai, kyu lena I remember my driver used to drive me and he was like, ये साहब का तो बंद होने वाला है ये चार चार हजार रुपए के लिए कॉल करते रहते हैं तो इनका यू नो इनका तो अब काम नहीं चलने वाला आई शुड प्रॉब्ली लुक फॉर अनदर जॉब राइट सो सो दीज मोमेंट्स आर वेरी डिस्प्लेसिंग एंड एक्चुअली द रिटर्न आफ्टर देम इज आल्सो नॉट ग्रेट राइट इट्स नॉट लाइक यू कम बैक फ्रॉम अ योगा मेडिटेशन थिंग एंड यू आर एनलाइटन वेन आई केम बैक फ्रॉम योगा मेडिटेशन इट वॉज द रियालिटी वॉज आई डेंट हैव अ जॉब आई हैड टू लुक फॉर अ जॉब आई पिक अप अ जॉब इन क्राफ्ट इन अ प्रिटी सीनियर पोजिशन एज अ डायरेक्टर बट आई वॉज सो I didn't want to do consumer goods at all because some part of me had changed after a year of living in an ashram and I wanted to do something meaningful but I obviously had to pay my bills so it was very displacing to come back and like be in that commercial selling chocolates and biscuits whatever craft was doing you know good company but I started to feel a very strong misalignment with my values at that time nothing bad you know I I really respect organizations like that but something was changing in me so I felt ki but a funny thing happened which is uh, after a few months i had changed so much during these growth experiences that i always landed at a spot which was significantly better than the trajectory would have been if i had continued where i was and i saw this again and again as a pattern obviously people know vitha junior made a lot of money but that actually wasn't the even the thrust i had taken like that ta- ta- like my entire objective was to learn how to build tech right and but i always saw the same pattern emerge right which is uh, because i had grown so much in these experiences after a few months i would stabilize to a new normal which would have been much much better than my trajectory so for example when discovery was looking for a head in india they had a very slow business for 25 years and they were looking for somebody to come and shake it up and they were like oh there is a guy who's had a very good business career png craft etc had risen up very high in the ranks and he's had a full time writing career that's the perfect left right balance let's give him that opportunity right so i was always um somehow landing on my feet in a in a position or in a situation which was better than where a normal trajectory would have been so in a way i kind of found a little bit of this path emerge very on a very personal basis of experimentation which i now very firmly believe in after 20 years of watching my batchmates from iim and then watching people like me not just one trajectory but some of my trajectory and since you are very young i think um, or many of you are we i saw a little bit of a pattern emerge that there is a regular path which i think is also very good i have no um, like you know i have no disdain for it i think it's a great path which is a good linear path but there is also an alternative if your soul really cries for it like mine did every couple of years and i was very confused that time because i was like why do i have to keep going doing these things why are other people not you know feel, feel, uh, facing the same urge there is another alternate path in which you'll go through a lot of ups and downs as you t- take these growth events and suddenly you'll start seeing that all the dots converge right and when the dots start to converge you'll see that your life just accelerates completely accelerates in a dimension which is uh, very unthinkable for you and you'll be sub- like very funnily for example with vitha junior we decided to launch outside india in the first year of operation which was very unusual for startups but i had backpacked across south america uh, like in my early 20s so i always had this feeling that the world is much more similar than dissimilar right like i could be in the amazon in brazil and i felt completely at home there and the world is actually much more similar than dissimilar so i would uh, so i had this confidence that i'm going to launch my company outside india very early which led to um, it's it's like you know it's growth right and discovery for example the creative part of writing so a uh, a uh, kind of a thought process for you is that uh, as you go through your journeys there'll always be the steady conventional path which i think is beautiful and wonderful but if your soul cries for more i would listen to it because um, in its own way if you choose these extraordinary growth events you'll realize that you'll end up in a scenario uh, which is almost uh, uh, like in a in a faster trajectory or a higher trajectory than what you would have been if you hadn't chosen it right uh, that's been my conclusion so one and i'll i'll end with this um, i i have this format like i whenever i'm in the middle of tough decisions right since today uh, my book is coming out uh, this week and uh, i thought i would use a storytelling construct as i spoke about it when we write novels right i've written three novels and this is a non fiction book but very similar we always have a bit of a framework that we follow it's called lock you know just so that you uh, have an insight into how writers think 
uh, every story typically has L, a lead character, who has a very big objective, right? The bigger the objective, the bigger you'll be connected to the story. Why is that? Because the bigger the objective, the more sympathy you'll feel for the protagonist who's going to achieve that objective. And there is a lot of conflict that will come in the protagonist's uh, way, right? Because the, con the path, the goal chosen is so big that there is always going to be a lot of conflict in his way. And you get very immersed in the story. The story is very exciting because of the level of conflict in the story. And then in the end, there is a climax. Sometimes the hero actually doesn't win in the climax. He loses or she loses. But you'll always think that this story was wonderful because you got so uh, ingrained in the, you got so absorbed in that story, right? So if you think, take of any, any book that you like or a movie that you like, right? Say Three Idiots. Uh, you have characters who are very sympathetic, right? Because they have a very big objective. They want to change the education system, right? The system has a great conflict with them. And in the end, do they win fully? Maybe yes, maybe no, but you really have a lot of uh, respect for how the characters live their story, right? And every superhero movie is built on the same thing. Like Superman will always want to save the world because it's a very big objective. And as a result, the story is very interesting because there's a lot of conflict, right? Any other popular story, Shawshank Redemption, any, any classic story will always follow the same format. And when I was writing these books, I started to realize that actually life is very similar to this, right? as a, you are the lead character in your life. And the bigger you make your objective, right, um, you'll realize that the bigger your life will become. And there will be more conflict in your path, right? Family, friends, relatives, you know, the, 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 the noise of the world, right, which will kind of tell you that these are wrong paths to choose. You'll realize that the bigger your life will become, there'll be more conflicts on the path for sure. And in the end, there'll be a knockout and, you know, sometimes it won't work your way but you'll kind of look back and say, I lived a great story, right? And I think uh, that's how I'm gonna end, saying that uh, if your heart calls for, live a very good story, because you're never gonna regret living a big story, as I learned through my ups and downs, you know? That's all. Thank you for your time. So, a bit random detour from your wonderful sessions about communications and uh, business, but hopefully, provoke some thought, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, a lot of, some questions. I'm surprised, I thought it would be, what is this random talk I, about? You know? I think yeah. it's a, a bit of an observation also. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, you know, we all dreamt of that linear career. I faced some barriers pretty late. You started quite early, I faced some barriers pretty late. And it, but I couldn't recognize them until I really stopped hitting my head against the wall and I realized, okay, it's a sign that I need to move on and I need to do different things. And it's been, it's been challenging, but it's also been a wonderful. wonderful journey and full of learning. Uh, but what I wanted to say is that I think for the future, uh, people have to start imagining what you have spoken about is because you're not going to be staying in an organization forever, right? I mean, that was our parents and their parents and... But yeah. you have to think and allow yourself to be disrupted. So I, I love the, uh, you know, that you shared your journey and it should give people an idea that this is, this is not all bad, that this is going to happen and uh, you can actually use it to come out better. Wonderful point. Thank you for saying that. And uh, I would like to add one thing. One very surprising thing, very, very consistent with what you just said, uh, was that I started to realize maybe 10 years into my journey, which was very late, I wish I'd known it in the first uh, day of graduating from college, I always thought that, uh, that I was a bit of a wanderer who was doing things, right? I was working in my corporate career, writing on the side, had a very deep interest in yoga and meditation, you know, so I was kind of like, 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 I felt I was a bit confused, okay, I'm not building vertical expertise in anything. But actually, what life starts to teach you is that it's truly a one-stream view, right? Life is actually one stream of continuous learning. It's not multiple fields, and to your very excellent point, what you learn from creativity in any field, whether you're writing or creating a music album or creating a composition, will actually inform your job in, in ways that are very surprising and unexpected for you. And what you learn from like, uh, you know, very deep, for example, um, I, I, in my sabbatical year after uh, the Beju's exit, I walked the Camino de Santiago, which I highly recommend. That's an 800 kilometer walk from 
It's an 800 kilometer pilgrimage. Uh, old, uh, at, in olden times, Christians used to do that pilgrimage from a mountain in France to a city called Compostela in Spain. It's 800 kilometers of walking with like churches who give you space in the house in, the, in their basements in the night. And it's such a profound journey because for 30 days you just keep walking, there's nothing. You just have a backpack, you keep walking and, uh, and you start to realize how simple life is, right? That you complicate it so much. All you need is a backpack and, you, and for 30 days you can live so comfortably just walking and pushing yourself. Uh, and I realized that what I learned in that 30 day journey is really shaping how I'm thinking about uh, my next move, which is a company, uh, like which is a new startup I'm starting, and the, I'm working with the government now on in the Goa government, where I'm based on public sector projects, and I really shaped how I thought about uh, the world overall, right? And so I kind of started to think that life is actually a very one-stream view. If you take these detours, which seem like detours at that form, that time, are actually learning experiences that will shape your core, uh, uh, you know, whatever the core of what you're doing is. So thank you, thank you for bringing it up. Yes, yes. Um, during these detours or, you know, pivots that you sort of take, there is a lot of, when you start off, there's always this, oh, this college, this person go from A to B to C, now these many clients, now those projects, you know, there's like a graph that everybody is following, that everybody should, you know, seems like the thing that everybody should be doing. And then when sometimes you take this look at yourself and think that, okay, maybe I want to do something else or maybe I want to take a detour and retrospectively like think about how to now go ahead and all of that. There's a lot of noise around, right? Yeah. When you decide to sort of invest in yourself in a different way or introspect Correct. more or sort of, you know, think about how you um, look at certain things, it puts you at the back foot for a bit. And yeah. then everybody else is sort of, there's this race and everybody seems to be acing it. And there's continuous noise. And there's continuous expectations that probably you had and the people around you also had. Oh, you were supposed to be that golden eyed child, what happened? So how do you deal with all of that external conflict also and keep faith in your journey? Like, how did you do that? Also, do you have any regrets? Like, because so many detours. It's a very good question. Um, I think the summary of the question is that the noise around you of family, friends, especially in like very strong uh, background, like, you know, traditional backgrounds like India, you know, which uh, we all experience, how do you deal with it? My conclusion has been that um, it's a bit like a muscle. The more you exercise the muscle, the stronger it gets. So when I took my first leap, Right when I left my job for the first time to backpack at that time, I was 29 years old, and you know, obviously, my parents were saying, uh, were you know, wanting me to get married and all that kind of stuff at that point of time. And, uh, and, and in fact, leaving Procter and Gamble, my boss said, Look, Procter and Gamble is actually a one way door, right? You're doing so well now that you're leaving, you'll never be able to come back because PNG doesn't take people laterally, right? That was very famous. PNG always took people there, so there's a, there was a lot of noise, and I felt very bad. I can't say there's any, I felt like I was just on a self-destructive track. And by the way, when I came back from it, the worst case scenario that I thought happened, which is that I didn't have a job for months because the entire US market had crashed. The next time over, it was a bit simpler because I was like, Ek bar pehle ho chuka hai. That, at that time also people were the general noise was very high, right? Ki, ye kya hai? Like 35 pe koi yoga sikhne jata hai, to, you know, and all that kind of stuff, right? So I was like, you know, I've experienced this once before. It's quite a... I know this is, there is some merit in what my instinct is so strong. By the time I started my startup, I was shameless. I was right, quite, like I don't even care what people will say because I know this is the right decision. I can continue on my like uh, very traditional, uh, like you know, very conservative, good discovery job. And yes, that sounds good on paper because it's comfortable. But I know my history of life has told me that the more uncomfortable my move, the more discontinuous the growth opportunity, the more I'm going to transform and I know that at the end of the following the lock, form, lock format, uh, at the end of that, the, the climax is going to be good, right? So, so in a way, I, all I can say is that it's just going to get progressively easier. And the first time is very hard. Second time is a little less hard. By the fourth time, you'll be shameless. <laughs> so that's the, I guess that's the best thing I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, uh, and uh, it was an inspiring story of yours. So, as a creative person, my question to you is, uh, you have seen lots of up 
ups and downs in your life and sometimes as a professional uh, we also go through long exhaustive days yes. and uh, it is difficult to also balance the creative uh, yes. uh, creativity which we have yes. and if i believe that every creative person has his own journey yeah. so sometimes uh, there is a term called writer's block for writers since you yes. are a writer yes. i would like to uh, ask this question like how you uh, dealt your long exhaustive days which obviously must have had some kind yes. of writer's block so how to overcome that as an aspiring writer i am asking you this question yes yes uh, thank you i think there are uh, so how do you overcome or uh, so i think there are two different questions how to overcome the typical writers or a creative block and also uh, when you have a demanding day job then how do you find enough time and mental space for creative endeavors right which which Uh, has been the case for me also because uh, when i wrote my second novel i was right in the middle of uh, you know like uh, i was i was like uh, i was with craft in new york i was uh, with boston consulting group bcg i was a management consultant quite a demanding job and after that i was with craft in new york a director i had like 100 200 people reporting to me so it was kind of pretty demanding at that point of time i think there are two things that have helped me um one is that uh, i believe actually discipline leads to freedom it kind of the opposite when people think of freedom right and they keep asking me also okay now you have money right uh, why don't you not do anything right in some ways people's expectation is that uh, f- uh, but i've seen that actually i'm more disciplined than ever in my life because uh, what what i've seen is that if you are very disciplined then you actually are at your creative best so for example when i was uh, writing during those days i had a crystal clear discipline that i would write for 45 minutes on the weekdays after my work and 4 hours each on saturday and sunday and i won't write any more than that in that 45 minute that i would sit i would produce 400 words and on the weekend i would produce 1000 words and i would just say look i have to just show up and do this i don't have to ask a question aaj thaka hua hu aaj ye ho gaya aaj wo ho gaya out of the 5 days that uh, there are the weekdays i'm going to write 4 days a week and i'm going to write for, for 45 minutes th- 400 words a day and then on the weekend i'm going to write 1000 words for 4 hours each if you do that in 6 months you produce a novel by the way right if you just come and show up i'm not saying it's going to be very good the first time but you're going to produce a novel once you produce a novel and you realize that you produced a novel you'll be like oh i can do this and you probably might revise it and you'll make it better the next time over with the same discipline so i've actually found in my life that when you're very disciplined you actually are very free and for that kind of a discipline you don't need um you actually don't need uh, like you don't need to be free in the sense of like not having a job or being on a sabbatical you can actually do it so for example in the startup days i i always had this one 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 routine which i always followed kiro every day i have to do one hour of exercise one hour of meditation and one hour of uh, reading and uh, like you know so that i don't atrophy and just keep executing right so startup hours are very intense uh i used to work like 10 to 10 6 days a week but then around that i'd constructed my life right i would wake up do my exercise spend time with my kids then meditate on the way to office or whatever like the point being that if you have very crystal clear routines that you set up you'll realize that you are able to accomplish a lot in your life even if you are very kind of uh, packed with the uh, you know with 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 what you're doing the second thing uh, which also has been helpful for me is i kind of think of creativity like almost uh, that you have a creative well uh so you fill up the well and then you kind of drain it if you will which means that uh, during the during the times that i was in a job in an intense job i would read very extensively you know do do a lot of stuff which was less demanding uh, i would just kind of fill the well with experiences right travel read etc and then i would take these periods of time sabbaticals etc to make sure that whatever i had learned i had turned it into a piece of art right a book a novel uh, so so i think uh, the other way i look at it is ki look there are periods where you are learning and then there are periods that you are doing but don't be a person who just keeps learning and doesn't do and don't be a person who keeps doing and doesn't learn you know you have to kind of figure that balance out and i i kind of used to ended up doing that right in my job period i would make myself a learning machine and then i would take some time off and write a book and f- finish it off so that's that's the so i think if that helps you i think routine helped me a lot thank Karan, you so much uh, zavier here it's a uh, you know interesting question i can see you yeah uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Hi. what if your starting point was not i am bangalore sorry could you repeat what that? if your starting point was not i am bangalore 
Yeah, so it's a good question, which is, does the privilege of um, uh, like a IV, a very strong degree, make all of these things easier? I, I can't see it. I, can't, um, I won't know what I don't know. But I do think that um, when I took the first leap, uh, I was in the US, right? I was uh, like, I'd moved from India to the US already. And in the US, nobody cares whether you're from IM Bangalore, right? You're a guy without a job, like simply. Like, like in the sense, there is no pedigree that is going to make you like any like any easier for you to kind of re-enter the world right i think the best you can do is that when you take a leap you're very clear on the goal that you want to accomplish with that leap because that goal will actually make you transform right so for example when i'd first taken the uh, like you know i'd left my job to backpack i realized very qu quickly in a few days that uh, just seeing more churches and beaches is not making me you know, is not evolving me, so I had taken up a goal of like writing a novel. And that goal of taking up a something like a big significant project in these leaps, whether it's to become a yoga teacher, write a novel, start a company, or uh, you know, like whatever goal I had picked up during this period, that was the goal that transformed my, me. And, and I saw that the world actually rewarded that internal transformation. So I actually don't think pedigree helped me much because of the context that I was in. The transformation that happened in this period was eventually always rewarded by the world, right? So one of my thoughts always is that any system is very inefficient in the short term and very efficient in the long term. Short term systems have high level of inefficiency, right? Because it's imperfect information, things are, but in the long term systems end up because like the stock market, right? Very inefficient in the short term, in the long term it will reward the company for its real inherent potential. It's a human life is a bit like that, right? So if you really grow and transform by becoming a yoga teacher for one year and you really attain some kind of uh, de deepening of the soul, you'll realize that you're so much better at work that eventually you'll be promoted faster or get better opportunities. It's just going to happen because uh, the external world will always reward your internal growth over a period of time. I hope that's it, but I, I don't want to be too pat, right? Obviously, I had the pedigree of IM. Yes, yes, sure. Any, any, you, you guys have the time clock. Thank you, thank you, Karan, for that interesting session. I am also looking at the cover of the book, and something sticks with me is freedom and half of the M that's flying, taking the flight. Right. I was having a very interesting conversation with a person yesterday whom I can also call my career sponsor, right? And we were talking about when to take a flight and when to stick around and fight. And of course, commitment is, hashtag commitment is one key characteristic of a successful person in, in, you know, in addition to discipline yes. that you spoke about. Those are the two keywords yes. for me for sure, Correct. right? How do you know when to stay back and still fight for something that you've taken up and to yeah. see through the results that there is some, still some potential for me to realize out of this? And when is the time to really take the flight? How, how to know when is the time to take the flight? Excellent question. Thank you. So how do you know when you're giving up too early or uh, at like, you know, like in your kind of, are you leaping too early by not sticking through with what you've uh, picked up? I so I think for me, it's almost, it's been very almost mathematical. Like I've had very clearly defined goals for uh, the things that I've taken up, right? So in, uh, in, 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 for example, when I was writing my third novel, I defined that it should be my first novel that is published all over the world. It should not be published only in India. It should be of a quality that is significant enough that it should be published all over the world. I wrote it full time for 18 months. I was rejected 61 times. 61 publishers rejected me. And I kept improving it and I kept improving it. I kept improving it until it got published by Random House all over the world, right? I met my goal and then the novel didn't do well after it came out. But I was like, you know, uh, my goal was to write something which was so excellent that it, uh, you know, that it, like, you know, it, it, uh, it was kind of like, you know, by the best gatekeepers, it was considered excellent. And then, uh, you know, after that, I, I, like, I let go of the dream of being a writer because I knew I had reached my limit of what I was capable of and moved on back to the corporate field. So in a way, I feel like, um, like, again, one of my always thoughts is that, look, the, the output is not in your control right but the input is in your control so i almost wake up every day thinking that look i'm just going to give 100 percent of my energy to my input and not think of the output too much and i kept kind of giving 100 percent of my energy to the input till 
you know, I felt it had reached a logical conclusion and whether it worked or not after that, I was like, you know, I, I knew that was like, uh, I'd done the best I could have done uh, to reach its point. So I think very clearly defined goals uh, on what you're accomplishing will, and, and making sure that you reach that goal before you take a leap, that would be very helpful. That's very good. And not to focus on the output, right? Like I, all of these times, I was actually doing very well in my career, right? So there was always this thing, you to vice president and you are going to yoga. So I was always very detached from all this stuff, right? Ki, you know, like vice president. And I mean, I, I was never, I didn't, I just in, genuinely started caring less and less and less about it as my li life got more and more in some ways panoramic, right? So it was always like, ki, you know, I didn't like, I don't want to be the CEO of Discovery Asia after Discovery India. I want to do, I want to learn tech, right? And I would choose my learning versus the external markers of what the world thought was success. Yeah. Uh, my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Good luck. It was a delight to meet you. Yeah.